invite you to stand as you are able. Most gracious God, look with mercy upon your family gathered here, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, given into sinful hands, and suffered death upon the cross. Strengthen our faith and forgive our betrayals as we enter into the way of his passion. Through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. The servant grew up like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. The story of the great three days continues after Jesus shared a final meal with his disciples. From the Gospel according to Luke, the 22nd chapter. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them, about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to see the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial.
the betrayal begins. While he was still sleeping, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike them with a sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers, and the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised and we held him of no account. Denied. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man, this man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else, on seeing him, said, You are also one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, still another kept in sea, insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, 
before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophecy, who is it that struck you? And they kept heaping upon him other insults. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council. They said, if you are the Messiah, tell us. And he replied, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? And he said to them, You say that I am. When they said, what further testimony do we need? We've heard it ourselves from his own lips. He is brought as a lamb to slaughter, as a sheep before its shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth, for our sins, he was punished. He was numbered with the sinners, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. For our sins, he was punished. Then the assembly rose as a body, 
and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and to the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at the time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other before they had been enemies. Christ became obedient for us unto death, accepting death upon a cross. It was our infirmities he bore. It was our suffering he endured. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung for the salvation of the whole world. O oh, come, let us worship him.
Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of the charges that you've brought against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he's done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then all the crowds shouted together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! And the third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. They released the man they asked for, and the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder. And he handed Jesus over as they wished. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken from the transgressions of people. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs who never bore, and the breasts who never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it's dry? Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching the leaders And the leader scoffed at him, saying, He he saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over them. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. 
And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Dear friends, we gather tonight in growing darkness as we remember our Lord Jesus Christ and what he suffered on the cross. And we remember, we remember those who were with him. Who would you want with you? Who would you want with you in your last breath? Sometimes we have no choice. Unfortunately, in the last years, it was so for many people that there was no one that they knew. Having gone through the COVID pandemic experience, many died alone or with only a stranger to hold and stroke their hand. I don't know about you, but I think I might want somebody there comforting me. Someone I knew. And yet, time after time, as I have attended those at their bedside, most often, people wait until everyone has left. It's a journey to be made alone for many. We'd want that place, or at least we'd want that place in the next life. But who were those closest to Jesus? Two criminals. A colleague of mine, friend, wrote this week and asked us to share if we wanted to these few words about that time. Two criminals, morally distant from Jesus, yet they were his intimates in his death. James and John had wanted to occupy the thrones on Jesus' left and right, but it was reserved for criminals. One of them said but nine words to Jesus, and was promised paradise. The garden from which Adam and Eve departed hand in hand had lain vacant all this time, and it would be regained for humanity by this criminal walking with a nail-splintered hand in nail-splintered hand with Jesus.
place of honor? Yeah. The place we'd like to be with Jesus? Yes, indeed. But it's not something we can gain on our own. Instead, it comes as a gift, undeserved, unmerited, and holy, sometimes without reason. Nine words. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And the response, today, you'll be with me in paradise. For the sacrifice of Christ, we receive the greatest gift, the gift of life eternal. That place in paradise for us, undeserved, unmerited, not something we can ever earn. And yet it is gifted to us. That is our hope that continues to pervade through darkness, through t storms, through trials in life. It is here for us. As we ponder these events this evening, we know that as we leave in darkness, that darkness is not the end. Only light can overcome darkness. Darkness cannot overcome it. And the light of Christ will live on in each one of us, undimmed and unshaken and it will be there for all time. Did we deserve this? No. Did he? No. Even Pilate and Herod knew. But the crowds which had welcomed him on Palm Sunday had been expecting something totally different. And when he didn't live up to that, they turned, as crowds often do. So here we are, with Jesus at the cross, a place to lay down our burdens, a place to leave our cares, so that we may walk freely in life again. He lives eternally, and our hope is sure. Amen. Lord Jesus, one of us betrayed you, another denied you, and all of us have forsaken you. Yet you remained faithful to death, even death on a cross. Strengthen, Strengthen us, us so we do not turn aside, but follow you through sunlight to shadow to light. For the final victory belongs to you, Lord Jesus. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. While the sun's light faded, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly, this man was innocent. 
And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. <laughs> 